Close-up of Yomi, seated on a stool in front of a window. I think I was in a state of pain and loss to the extent that I feel like committing suicide because I could not do what I used to do anymore. I could not mingle with my friends anymore. I could not play football anymore. I could not do most of the things I used to do on my own. So I look at myself, I'm in a different world entirely. So I start learning how to do things differently, which take me a lot of years, and I'm still yet in the process of learning things in a different way. We are CNIB, Intersectionality Series. Meet Yomi. My name is Adeleke Ogunbaya, and I love to go by Yomi. Originally, I'm from Nigeria, but I moved all the way from the state to Canada. I experienced division loss in 1998, yeah, the first time when I was first diagnosed by the doctor. I've been a member of CNIB a couple of years ago. Right now, let's say uh, two years ago. I found out about CNIB when I first came to Canada uh, a couple of years ago uh, through an organization called Balance for the Blind. Uh, because then, when I came new to Canada, I needed a mobility instructor to move me around to get me familiar with the city. So by moving around with him, that's when he introduced me to CNIB. Intersectionality, to me, it means identity. Who am I? Who are you? For example, I realized that if my color, my accent, my visual impairment, it has given me an identity to tell people who, I, who am I and my professions. So intersectionality to me is all about who you are, your identity. What I want people to understand by intersectionality is all about understanding individual differences whether by your color, whether by your disability, whether by your political status or social status or economic status, we should have that understanding that we have different strengths and ability and how can we accommodate one another. The biggest misconception is that people believe people with loss of vision can't do anything at all in as much they can see. So they believe they should be subjected to the mercy or the, 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 uh, the discretion of the sighted, which not to. So I would just want to advise people that we need more awareness, more advocacy for people to understand, even in our university, in our hospital, accommodation for people with vision loss. How the people who are sighted, how can they accommodate people with vision loss? There is a couple of times I feel misunderstood due to my sight loss because of my eyes is wide open. And sometimes, if I get familiar with my environment, I seem to be more comfortable and live more independently. So if people see me around, they will look at me twice. Are you sure? You can see. Oh, the kind of services I find most useful in CNIB, uh, to me, I would say almost everything. Because I'm involved in about three groups. I'm involved in advocacy, peer support person and come to work program, which really give me more confidence and really create more awareness for me to know, discover what I've never discovered before. So because I believe CNIB is a great organization that give a platform for someone like us. What I would tell somebody that recently lost a sight is that I will introduce this person to CNIB. I will introduce this person to different kind of programs because I, I see him in a state of bargaining, in a state that is battling with a lot of feelings and emotion, trust in God. Well, there is something my family and friends did not understand about inter intersectionality. Uh, but I really feel in that gap in order for me to educate my family and friends. Because after realizing my vision loss and the kind of training I've had as a visually impaired person, I try to educate my family. Because my family also believe, oh, you are part of our responsibility. We will do everything for you. We have to, 
you know. So I later, through the help of CNIB, Vision Loss Organization, they begin to know more about somebody that has sight loss. I was not born blind. I later become blind in journey of life. So my family does not have any idea of someone that is blind. So almost five years, I was at home not doing anything until I start figuring out things on my own, meeting with blind people, having a mentor as a blind man. And you can live your, you can become what you, whatever you want to become. Come on, this should not stop your life. You can still move on with life, just in a different way. So my family and friends start to begin to have the awareness of vision loss and putting more interest to create more support. I just thank God for God being with me. I know I have a guidance angel that watches over me. And I, I believe in, in some spirituality, so which has to do with my belief system. I believe God is always watching over me. So I always thank God for that, for his protection and for gift of life. That apart from my sight loss, I'm healthy and strong. I am CNIB. Contact us at CNIB. Email info at cnib.ca or call us toll free 1-800-563-2642. This project was created by the GTA Advocacy Team and funded by a grant from Canadian Heritage.